a word on Warcraft, Holly, Longdale on Dragonflight, Patch, and Classic. Oh yeah, this is interesting. So this is the timeline for uh, the for retail WoW. So I mean, other guys play retail, but they, they probably like moved some stuff around, right? It looks like the expansion is coming out late summer. But here's what is interesting, right? This is the roadmap for Classic. We are right here, okay? This is where we are on E, right? It's about to start uh, phase two. Um, Cataclysm Classic Vita before was between Season of Discovery and Hardcore, but has been pushed back uh, to be before level 50 Season of Discovery. Um, so there's been a pushback for the beta of, of, of Cataclysm, uh, not the actual launch. So that was like a change they made in this uh, roadmap here. So instead of the beta coming out, maybe the end of this month is going to come out. Looks like it's going to be April. Pro yeah, like mid-April or something, right? Because like uh, I think spring starts in 20th March. Yeah, 20th March. So uh, that's here. And then Cata beta is right here. So like, yeah, definitely April. So but judging by this. So like cell phone hardcore will be like mid-March. Um, it looks like, and then Cata Beta will be like mid-April, and then level 50 uh, SOD will be maybe end of April, early May. So this could be three months of phase two, guys. So don't don't rush the game. I know you want to play 24 hours on launch. Listen, okay? Don't, don't just like exhaust everything out of this phase. Take it nice and slow. Have fun, okay, guys? Because, uh, you know, it might be a three months, uh, might be three months long, so... I right, way late supplies tooltip issue. Um, as a part of our change to way late supplies to make them no longer unique, you can no longer hand in particular partially filled crates. So you'll need to vendor those. At this time, the tooltip still says they can be turned in unfilled. We will deploy a hotfix for the tooltip as soon as possible. Oh yeah, so I heard that there were people that saved 150... Uh, way late supply boxes for phase two their entire bank was full their entire uh, bag was also full and blizzard has increased the amount of experience you receive from these way late supply crates i believe people were getting around 3000 xp uh, with the 50 percent buff so like you get a box guys in phase two fill it all right uh, hand it in you're gonna get big xp but any boxes that you have found now will not give any XP at level 25. So you won't be able to just hand in all the boxes and get XP. So anyone that saved up all these boxes, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that. Right? They did the same thing with the, with the Warsong Marks. Warsong Marks will not be giving any experience at all. And there was a pretty harsh tweet about it from Agrand. I, I kind of want to... I want to show you guys this actually because I I found it quite amusing. Oh, here it is. So, <laughs> can you imagine being this guy? <laughs> He's like, like here's the thing. This is also not cheap, right? So like every every one of these boxes here, uh, first of all, was a couple of flight paths, and also probably like fifty silver worth of materials at least, right? Um, so like. We're looking at probably 100 gold and who knows how many hours. Um, and yeah, every one of these boxes gives you like two to 3,000 experience. So this guy would have like... He would have been like level 33 or something just handing them in. But Blizzard has made it that they don't give XP at 25. I guess it's like any box that you have found before phase 2 doesn't give xp at 25 or onwards that's probably how they coded it right so if you found a box in phase two it would give you xp there's gonna be new boxes right yeah where is the uh, reply that i'm looking for he is pretty active on twitter so oh here it is um <laughs> this is pretty based this is regarding the marks um the the, the war song marks right uh, I don't have a ton of sympathy for folks who plan to abuse a quality of life feature like mail recovery to blast from 25 to 40 in an hour or less. Call it whatever, uh, call it what you want, but an exploit is an exploit. I'm sorry, not sorry, <laughs> if anyone wasted their time doing this nonsense. 
So yeah, if you guys didn't know, people were basically spamming Warzone Gulch and deleting the marks because they only stacked to 20. And then item restoring them in the mailbox. So they had like hundreds of marks that they were going to hand in to level 2, uh, 40 SAP. And yeah, it's not going to work. You can't even get experience from the marks anymore. Yeah, this was the post about that too. As we work through today's classic era maintenance, we're currently tracking two notable issues. First, we have discovered an issue with the operation to purge mail that we described here. We have decided to not do that, and instead we're going to suspend the XP gain from turning in marks of honor at level 25. It's going to be from 25 to 40, by the way, not just 25. In addition to removing the overflow mail from marks of honor. So basically now, if you, have, if you get 21 marks of honor that last one gets deleted. So there's no point for you to have more than 20 marks. You just go and hand them in, get the honor from them, right? Any marks uh, more than 20, they will get deleted. Uh, we suggest you spend your marks before reaching 20 of them. Uh, we also have an issue affecting interface add-ons. Some add-ons are, uh, are producing errors or not functioning as they did before. We currently expect to go live with this issue and we will then fix it as soon as possible. Are, are the add-ons working now? That was, that was a couple days ago. I don't know how they're working. Oh, this one's interesting. Okay, this, so this is a bit... Um, okay. So, BFD Void Trinket available in Booty Bay. Uh, 75 gold cost. Must have completed the quest. So, Blizzard has added a... There's a vendor in Booty Bay. I think he was always there, maybe. Uh, and he will now be able to sell you uh, the trinket from the last boss of, of uh, Black Phantom Depths. Now, here's something very important that you got to know. So, if you don't have the trinket, you have never looted the item that starts the quest that gives you a trinket. You can't come here and just buy the trinket. This is only for people that have the trinket already. Basically, the point of this is that if you were playing a Shadow Priest in Phase 1... And then you later decide, oh, I want to go Healer Priest. And then maybe you pick the Healer Trinket, right? And now you want to go back Shadow Priest in Phase 2, but you don't have the Shadow Priest Trinket. You can buy the Shadow Priest Trinket, assuming that you already have one of the three Trinkets. Now, the problem with this is that this is a unique item, so you have to delete, well, I guess Vendor, um, your existing Trinket to buy a new one. So you have to go... Fender this one and then buy this one. Yeah, I don't know how many people are going to be doing this. Um, honestly, 75 gold is kind of extreme. Uh, I believe they made the price this high. So it's like it, it, they wanted to be punishing for you to change your trinket because like, you know, decisions matter in classic. They always have matter. For example, the diamond flask quest on warrior. If you don't pick diamond flask, hey, that was your choice, right? So they don't want people to be able to freely swap uh, items from quests that's why they made it expensive now they have said that it was a mistake that they added a trinket this early into the game that was very powerful when there's not that many trinkets to pick from and they're gonna try to learn from this moving forward so they don't have this situation happen because let's be honest right if you pick the healer trinket and then you want to go dps and there's two other dps trinkets you wouldn't care about this right because you have other options, but there's no other options right now. So that's why it matters a lot. But yeah, it definitely is a bit, uh, you know, controversial. Like some people are getting mad about this because of the price. Um, again, you can't just go there and buy this. You need to have completed the quest. So if I'm like, I just hit level 25, I can't go and buy the trinket. This is not pay to win in the sense of buying a BOE on the auction house. This is like, oh, I already have the item. I picked the wrong item. That was my mistake. I'm going to pay 75 gold for my mistake. That's what this is, right? Oh, yeah, mount prices. This is a big one. So, basically, people um, were saying that the mounts were 50% cheaper. Um, and the reason why the mounts were 50% cheaper is because we were playing, I think, on the Season of Mastery client where mounts were cheaper in Season of Mastery. The reason why mounts were cheaper is because people had a leveling XP buff. So because you leveled faster, you had less gold at level 40. So then you couldn't afford a mount. So that's why they made it 50% cheaper. And it still was hard to have 40 gold at level uh, 40, even with that change. So that's why it was this price. Um, 
it is now the normal amount of gold. So it's going to cost you 100 gold to get normal mount. Minus 10% if you have honored. Minus 10% if you are rank 3. So it will be 80 gold or 81 gold um, if you are rank 3. This is how it's always been. It's just people thought it was going to be cheaper. Because that's what it looked like. But it was just the Season of Mastery version. Uh, so yeah, definitely a bit disappointing news for some. Like me, I have a lot of alts. If I level 7 characters to level 40, that means I have to spend, let's say I spend 90 gold each, 630 gold. So yeah, um, maybe I need to reconsider how many characters I level, right? Because that's that's uh, that's very expensive. Make sure you guys uh, find some good ways to make gold, because it's going to be not that cheap. Uh, I'm probably going to be playing one or two characters, honestly, in the first few weeks. That's kind of my plan. Um, it is only going to be hard to sustain characters early on, so I don't want to, like, you know, level too many and then, like, just, like, oh, I don't, I don't afford mount, I don't afford spells, so. So, yeah, it's, this is just normal price of mounts, by the way. Nothing has really changed, it's just, like, for some reason it was the SOM version, so people thought it was going to be cheaper. Uh, this is how it was in the original classic. Raider Insignia, PvP trinkets available for rank 5. So, it seems potentially... That the highest PvP rank that you can get in Phase 2 is going to be rank 5. I am not sure about this. Also, you can start farming honor for Phase 2 right now. There's already people that have 45,000 honor, uh, which is how much honor you need to get rank 5. So if you're rank 3 and you want to get rank 5, 45,000 honor, okay? You'll go from 3 to 5 in one week. Um, so, you know. Now, it's not really, it doesn't make sense to farm honor now because you can get more honor at level 40. But people are doing it because there's nothing to do right now. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, they also have added a new trinket from the looks of it called the Greater Insignia of the Horde. So, this trinket can only be used if you're rank 5. And what this trinket does is it removes all form of crowd control. So, this is basically a normal trinket from like retail or something, right? It doesn't just remove specific um you know like oh only blind only polymorph it's all crowd control so that's what you get it has the same cooldown i wonder if it shares cooldown with the other trinket so let's say you you know use it right and then can you swap to the other pvp trinket we don't know right uh no one can possibly know this but uh, that would be kind of good because they can have both uh, yeah removes it all cc sap trap everything it shares cooldown for sure we don't know that guys we don't know that um there's some crazy stuff that made it into the game i'm gonna go over okay um, there's some things that you don't know about and you're gonna go like WTF, okay? Like, there's no way that's gonna stay like that. Um, I'm speaking about mage-related stuff here. But yeah, um, that's, that's what you get, rank 5. So, I don't know if you can get rank 6 in this phase. I think you can. I don't know. I don't know, right? We're, we're gonna have to wait and see. But yeah, 45,000 honor to get to rank 5 from rank 3. That's a lot of honor, but is it though at level 40? You can probably get 45,000 honor at level 40 in one day. You played all day, maybe you would get you would get 45k. So, because the higher level you are, the more honor you get, right? Um, but yeah, right now it's it's gonna take a long time though. Okay, so uh, so apparently there was a guy that got a rune already. Uh, he found the spell frost bolt. Apparently, since then they have disabled this. So like the so the guy that found it, it's grayed out in his character. You know, like he can't use it, right? Uh, can someone link me the clip, by the way? Uh, I think I, I saw a clip posted somewhere, like, but it's not here. There's like a clip of what this looks like. So basically, if you want to know where you get this, spoiler alert. I believe it's from the level 44 caster trolls that are all the way in STV. You know, that like area where you gotta kill these like very high level trolls that drop the fetishes and stuff, right? The troll sweat. Um, you find it like up there, so... Um, if you you could probably get this at level 25 once the server is live. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Oh, that actually looks cool. Can you just uh, it's like arcade it missiles yeah, all in a circle, and then it has it, that it actually, actually looks, looks sick. cool. And it's arcane and frost damage. So this thing can proc frostbite. It can it can heal you as well, right? That's actually really cool. It doesn't... Oh, it procs frost. It's It actually looks sick, yeah. 
So like the thing about that, that's gonna be really OP in PvP. Is like imagine you're playing a frost mage, right? And then you have the regeneration rune. You can just spam that, slow a player, um, heal yourself, okay? Penetrate the resistance based on which lower resistance they have. So if you go for so if you're like a player and you just go for a high frost res and you have low arcane res, it's gonna factor in your arcane res. That's how that spell works. So let's say, for example, you're finding a boss. This boss has 100 Frost Res, and then he has 0 Arcane Res. He's just going to do it as if he has 0 Resistance. That's what's really good about this spell. It checks both your Resistance. It says it right here. And then it, 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 it deals damage based on the lower one. And it can it can obviously slow you. It will proc the Frostbite, right? It can it obviously work some Shatter. It will heal you with the Arcane Rune. Like, this is going to be really, really good. I expect, like, PvP mages to probably be playing this. Don't worry, I've been making PvP guides, guys, for phase two. Okay, we'll be doing some a lot of PvP on the stream, so you'll see me uh, own some noobs uh, with the frost fireball. Uh, One hundred percent. All right, so that happened uh, again. The guy that got this rune, don't get mad, right? He cannot use it. They have disabled the rune for him. He cannot like press it. He has the Drink rune, the but he can't use win. it. I was not expecting this, so like they made certain spells like living bomb explosive shot so that like if i use living bomb on a player and then that player runs to a civilian so then when the bomb explodes i kill the civilian and lose uh my rank that doesn't happen anymore so that's really nice the answer about win trading was pretty vague they they kind of said like yeah it's against the rules but you know hopefully people will police themselves and not win trade yeah we'll see about that uh, quality of life design. I mean, it's kind of same answer as the other one, right? Um, what was this? Yeah, this is just kind of just kind of like you know, not not really important here. Uh, class design. Like they basically said that apparently Heart of the Lion was gonna be in Phase Two, but I made it in Phase One because uh, people gave feedback, and you know, honestly, like it's a great choice. I don't think Paladins would have taken Blessing of Kings because it's in the protection tree. You know, like you want to play red. I'm glad they did that, right? So they were kind of just like explaining how they changed their mind based on feedback. Uh, yeah, they doubled down on the GDKP ban saying if you are doing something similar to a GDKP, so maybe you're bidding using Peace Bloom, like a, like you go to a casino, you buy the, the chips, right? With with money and then you bid with the, you, you know, you, you gamble with the, with the chips, right? Um, it's the same thing though, right? So they're going to ban you as well. You, you can't, you know, they know what you're doing. Right, so don't don't do GDKPs. Insult. Oh yeah, normally gun bosses will be plus two, not plus three. That means you don't need 17% hit chance. You don't get as many resists. You don't get as many misses. Blah blah. Right. Um, the bosses won't be immune to bleeds and poisons. By the way, the high, not high resistance. It would take slightly reduced damage actually. Not high resistance. They gave kind of a different answer here compared to the other video. In the other video, they mentioned high resistance, but here they said they will take slightly. Reduce damage. Okay. And yeah, this was just I'm talking about like uh oh yeah. Only Uldaman like Uldaman's like the highest available dungeon in, in uh, phase two. So you can't do Zulfarak, you can't do Meridon, uh, you can't do Sunken Temple. So it's a bit of a bummer. Um, you know how do I say this? So like I understand why they do this, and I think it's the right choice. The problem that I have as a player is that I don't have as many things that I can do in the game, right? Especially when one of the dungeons is turned into a raid, right? So there's only so many dungeons I can do. That's kind of my issue with it. Um, again, I would have always kind of hoped that they would add new raids instead of converting a dungeon into a raid so they have more content, but... It is what it is. Um, sadly, you know, this is going to be the case. You won't be able to do certain farms. Um, there's still plenty to do in Phase 2, though. I would say I'd say the game is bigger than what it was in Phase 1, right? Yes, you're level 40. You can do anything from level 1 to 40, so anything from level 1 to 25, right? So, because it, it might be still worth it for you to go to, like, low-level dungeons and just farm those or whatever, right? And they didn't mention anything, by the way, guys, in both interviews uh, regarding increasing difficulty of older dungeons so scarlet monastery is still scarlet monastery there's no additional mechanics or increased hp it's the same mode same mode so you're gonna probably be able to solo scarlet monastery 
at level 40 with normal gun gear and that's that's gonna be a good way to make gold so dungeon soloing is still like in the best state that's ever been in because of the dungeon being the same as it was more or less and you being way stronger so um there was no i was expecting them to do something about this because i was very surprised when i found out that like hey mobs in the outdoor world have like almost twice the hp at certain levels but dungeon mobs seem to be about the same i think it was like a 20 percent health increase how come eh, that's just how it is so i mean honestly there's just more stuff you can do because of that because it's easier to solo dungeons as almost any class i think only warrior can't really do it right but honestly screw warriors okay they're they're good at a lot of other things uh blizzard reveals four runes coming in phase two. Oh yeah this was like a mini trailer they made right quality looks kind of bad i think this is like the heal that they showed in the uh presentation right they fuse fire arcane and frost magic together for a massive heal you like store this so you it lasts like 15 seconds right you store a heal and then when you want you activate the ability again to heal a target i believe i mean that could be really good for aoe farming right like you're about to do a big pull you store a heal you do the pull you're about to die boom you heal yourself i'm just saying this could be the go-to room for aoe farming Assuming you can use it on yourself. Um, I mean, probably, right? <laughs> the backpedaling hunter on the... <laughs> but yeah, hunters control traps, right? With a... Use melee attacks to make healing and damage spells instant cast. That's the maelstrom weapon, right? That wasn't even instant, though. Uh, avoid damage and movement impairing effects. Dispersion. How are we gonna deal with Shadow Priest? I feel like they're gonna be the best in PvP, man. Everybody's saying rogue, rogue, rogue. I don't know, man. Like, Shadow Priest? Like, so apparently, uh, Shadow Form is going to have a 50% mana cost reduction of all Shadow spells. Yeah. So while in Shadow Form, uh, Shadow Form um, everything is 50% cheaper than Shadow related. That's crazy. Yeah, you also get Shadow Fiend. I mean, it's <laughs> Shadow Priest, bro. It's going to be really good. And yeah, if you don't know, this version makes you take 90% less damage. And you can move. And it removes all movement, sparing, movement and pairing effects. And gives you 6% mana per second. Lasts for 6 seconds. Amazing, amazing ability. Um, two minute cooldown. Okay. So there's that. Some information here. So before in Warzone Gulch, there was a hidden um, buff on players that made all players, except hunter pets, I believe, or, or pets, uh, take 20% less damage. So if I would throw a, you know, uh, a lava burst on you, in, in where PvP would do like 300 damage, right? It's 20, maybe 25%, yeah. It would do like 25% less damage in Warsong. Which kind of sucked because like, you know, some classes get hurt more than others on this. Like if you're a healer, I mean, your healing is the same. So then like you feel more powerful, right? And then like if you're a warrior, you get less. Anyways, so this is gone now. This is gone. There's no more damage reduction. Instead, you have a 20% health increase. Um, I think this is better. Right, so you're going to do the same damage, but people have a bit more HP. So I believe the point of this is that because people do more damage, PvP is like more extreme. So like you can get one shot more likely, right? So that's why they had the 25% damage reduction. But it's not fun to take less damage. Even though if essentially having 20% more health is like the same effect, it feels better to see big numbers, you know? um it, it kind of sucks for some classes like warrior as well when you just charge in and then you get no rage almost right so i think this is a better better thing to do i'm kind of glad they did this right yeah I, I don't know what the kind of the feedback people gave about it but it's probably mostly positive oh yeah this is uh we're gonna go over spoilers guys you guys want spoilers or no spoilers this, this is gonna be five new items take it in mind i mean it's just five items okay all right um, so these are five items that have been data mined in Normagon. Let's go over one of them. This is this is the helmet from original Normagon. 
but it has more stats, I think, and it just gives you a 16 more healing and spell damage. I think this already was there. So pretty much the same item, but it has 16 more damage. And this, I don't know if it's new or not. Looks like a uh, good item for Ellie Shaman, maybe Enhancement Shaman. Yeah, Ellie slash Enhancement slash Resto Shaman item, right? And then here we have a very similar one, but instead of Spirit, it has Agility. And it has 1% hit. Sorry, crits. So Hunters would like this. Enhancement Shamans again, probably, right? So that's kind of what that is. Um, and then there's a Plate Helmet that has Mana Region and 1% crit. With Intellect and Stamina, probably Holy Paladin item. Maybe also Red Paladin. Um, and then here is some very good gloves. So they have 10 agility and 11 stamina. Leather gloves with 3 fist weapon skill and 3 mace skill. Dude, these are kind of nuts, man. If you're, if you're running maces or fist weapons, I assume these are your best in slot. I can't see how anything else could be better. Um, and I think there are some really good fist weapons in, in Nomergan. So yeah, people are going to want those gloves for sure. Oh yeah, so like uh, this is way late supplies. They stack to 12 now. So no longer one crate only, guys. You can have up to 12 crates. How about that? It only took two and a half months for the technology to increase this number from 1 to 12. Uh, but that's it's still nice, you know, like uh, no more running back and forth when you get one crate. I believe that was it for uh, posts on Wowhead.